When you look at the shonen genre, it is based on one thing only, fighting. But despite this fact, hundreds and thousands of different stories were crafted based on that premise. There's good guys fighting bad guys, good guys fighting bad aliens, and more recently, when the genre is already oversaturated, you get guys versus guys. Because the good guy realized that. However, when it comes to romance, I mean, it's just two people falling in love, isn't it? But that's talking about romance in general. Now that we're gonna focus on rom-com in anime, there is literally only one formula to this, and that is high school love. We've all seen at least one high school rom-com, and to be honest, there's not much reason to watch another one, since it's going to be the same thing anyway. I mean, I've been a rom-com fan my whole life, but now that I'm a second year in university, I think I shouldn't like watching high school rom-coms anymore? Or so I thought. Until I watched Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. I, I really hate these modern titles, man. Anyway, let's see how good this series is and how it's a concrete evidence that rom-com in anime isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Let's go over the premise. Alia is this perfect girl who also speaks Russian, and she doesn't have any other friends except for this guy, Masachika. Alia is basically a sundere, and she only says her true thoughts in Russian. Are you from Russia? No, no, I'm from England, America! But she's oblivious to Masachika's secret that he's fluent in Russian. Due to a childhood friend temporarily staying in Japan when he was a kid, Masachika has been studying Russian in hopes of reuniting with her. Also, Alia has a sister who's also in the same school and it's looking like she's the childhood friend of Masachika and not Alia. Yeah, you see the drama already, don't you? The animation for this is absolutely phenomenal. This is the flagship, the, the highest caliber of which animation could go. They really put in all their budget for the show and I absolutely loved it. I mean, the fact that it has different endings for each episode. I've seen so many light novel adaptations that get really mid or even bad animations and it would always feel like such a waste of potential because all the light novels that made it to becoming an anime all had good stories. Here, with this kind of animation, I would still watch it even if the story is bad. For me, this is just the peak right now regarding animation. The story as of now, I feel, has been very good and is only going to get better. The story is written upon the understanding that the audience has already seen everything, so the author either just flip on our expectations or double down on it. It's very clever and it's like the author knows exactly what we want. You want a perfect girl that's good at academics and sports, has the look of a goddess, but is a loner and got deep personal problems? I got you, homie. You want a drama where either of the sisters could be MC's childhood love, and now you get to see a love triangle in the family. I got you, homie. Wait, did someone say love triangle in the family? No? Because we got double the love triangle from the MC's family, and this time, his sister is in love with him. Bam, I got you, homie. Oh, Arthur really woke up one day and said, says his sweet sis. That's incredible. Uh, but yeah. The plot is just really interesting right now and the author really knows how to intrigue you and lure you in and just tickle your dangling balls. No, 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 you gotta tickle their balls a little bit. Tickle them more. I said that because it's the summer and it's very hot right now and my balls are sweating. But we're not here to talk about my balls, so let's just move on and get to the characters. Of course, we have to talk about Alia first. Her name is in the title. For me, she's an S-tier waifu. The fact that she's a perfect girl ties in with her character arc rather than just to glorify her. And I love that. She could be classified as a sundere, but doesn't let herself fall into the trope. She is herself. And what I mean by that is sometimes she acts soon, basically acting all feisty or cold. But when it gets serious, she shows that she really actually care and is being gentle rather than just putting up that ice cream act all the time. She's also the type to get what she wants, despite the fact that as of now, she's still unsure of her own emotions for the MC. We've seen her go out of her ways just to get that man, and I honestly respect that a lot. So the female lead of a rom-com that's not annoying, but rather charming and cute and awesome? Now, 
to the MC. Normally, the MC in a rom com would be bland as fuck, but in this one, the man's an absolute chad. He's an otaku who acts lazy in class, but he's actually a very capable person. He's funny most of the time, but when it comes down to business, he is very serious and gets the job done. He's caught in many lucky perv situations in the show because it's a rom-com anime, but then he acknowledges it and then appreciates it and always try to be as respectful as possible and not pushing his luck. Most importantly, there are so many moments where he appeared and became the knight in shining armor that rescued the princess and it is just so satisfying to watch. A beautiful S tier husband for a beautiful S tier wife. So now with the two leads in the rom-com being that good, the series has already done an excellent job. But then there's another character that really sold me this and that is MC's little sister. She's also an otaku and she's very self-aware. When you talk about self-awareness in a comedy anime, it's a hit or miss most of the time. But for this one character, I absolutely loved her. There was ones where she broke the fourth wall like freaking Deadpool. She seems like that loud equals funny character, but then she's actually funny and acts unserious the whole time, but when it needs to be serious, then she gets serious, just like her brother. And yes, I did mention this from the start of the video, she is in love with her brother. And not, not any of the not related by blood bullshit, real straight up incest. Same hair color type of incest. Came from the same womb type of incest. And you're gonna watch it, and you're gonna love it. I'm not sure where the story's heading with that storyline, but I'm excited to see. The show really is a concrete evidence that this genre in anime specifically is not gonna die anytime soon. In fact, it's probably gonna thrive even more. We've reached a point where we can just go online, spend the morning or an afternoon, and already would have finished one or two series. So built upon the knowledge that people have seen everything, each anime in this new generation has found a way to separate itself from the norm and make a name for themselves. You know how long I've been waiting for this? Ooh, I'm about to make a name for myself here. Yeah. A few examples would be 100 Girlfriends, where even the concept itself sounds blasphemous. But somehow they doubled down on that and actually wrote a great story from it. So people then love it. Or like Boku Yaba, The Dangers in My Heart, where it says, F the expectations. I'm just gonna make a beautiful romance from head to toe, and you're gonna like it. And well, I liked it. They are all aware of the audience and what we want to see. And so even if the new stories are still just about two people falling in love, it's still a great watch for everybody. And now with the newest addition that is Alia, I can confidently say that rom-com is here to stay.